Python, the very first thing in the Jupyter has to please mute the mics. One second, let me check whose mic is open. Uh, please mute it. Thank you. All right. So uh, in the Jupyter, you will have to get the shortcuts of all the things because for every time you are not going to go up manually and then run all the files and the codes accordingly. So shortcuts are like if you want to write up a heading instead of going here and just taking as edge, you can just take the markdown because nowadays markdown and heading works as the same, right? So what is the shortcut for that? Just is the shortcut is uh, the escape escape character the first one escape button and then the M okay and then you can write the headings like giving up the hashtags one hashtag stands for the oh sorry that's a wrong spelling you know like in HTML we have h1 to h6 we say h1 to h6 if you have studied HTML, you might be knowing that we have different types of headings in there. H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. As like as the numbers increment, the size decrease, right? For H1 is this, for H2 is this, for H3 something like this, H4, sorry. H5 and the last one is H6. So these are the headings. Everyone know this? Yes, sir. Size of the headings of like how we can write other things. The two hashtags, two headings, three hashtags, uh, size becomes three times lesser than the first one. And that is how we are able to. Okay. So uh, you, I think, all are compatible with what are keywords, what are literals, what are tokens, right? Anyone who can say what what is a token? What are tokens? Tokens are like uh, fixed keywords used in uh, any language which uh, perform a specific predefined things. Predefined things. Okay. What are keywords? They are like inbuilt functions. Inbuilt functions? Like they have a specific uh, user defined functions. User defined functions. I'm getting some different. Reserve verb in Python. Reserve verb, correct. That is the keyword. Okay. Uh, what are literals? Like boolean, boolean literals. No, what exactly it is? So they are constants. Constants. So, okay. So they are used to write a value in Python, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say? Someone said that these are used to write up the values. One second, one second, one second, I have one more. That is the reason not working. Just a moment. Yeah, okay, fine now. So, uh, lit literals, you are saying that these are used to write up a values, constant value. Or these are basically the constant values, right? Okay, then uh, what? what are the five kind of, uh, we can say, we have tokens, right, in uh, Python? Then what are the five tokens? Can you define? Quick, easy. Words, literals. One second. One, one. Yeah. What do you say? Literals. Okay. Next. All right. I asked about the keywords. This is one. Second is the identifier. Keywords. 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 Yeah, keywords is done. What are identifiers? What? Identifiers. Identifiers. Strings. Strings. No. We cannot say basically the strings. 
Anything else? Identifies as something where we give Suppose names to that. Right. We can say that. Yeah, what you say? Sir, identifies as variables means whose values can be changed. Yes, yes. Identifies as variables. Uh, we we can say identifies as variables. See, uh, so they are memory locations to store uh, numeric or alpha numeric values. Okay, okay. See, 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 see. Uh, I'm giving you so forth all the basic definitions. See, the very first in the tokens. Oh, oh, do you know what tokens are also called as? Lexical. So the smallest executable part of a program. Yeah, that that is a definition of a token. Smallest individual unit of a program. But what what is the another name of that token? Lexical units. Okay, uh, I'm writing there. Tokens are also okay. I'm just deleting this one. This is now of no use. So tokens are also called as lexical units. Uh, I'm mentioning here this. Sorry. Tokens. Lexical units. Okay. Now, okay, five kind of things are there. Keywords, which are nothing but some of the special names or the reserved names that are already present in Python. The next is your uh, identifiers. Or basically, we say it as uh, the names given to the different parts of the programs or the codes, uh, like for the variables, object, functions, list, dictionary, so forth, everything. Okay. And the literals, when we come to the literals, we say, hey, wait one second, someone is there. Yeah. Yeah, so literals are the data items have, which are having a fixed constant values. And these can be string literals, numeric literals, Boolean literals, specific literals like tuples and nans. Okay, next come operators. So uh, you can say operators are the tokens that trigger some computation actions when applied to the variables. Okay, and at last it comes with the punctuators, which are nothing but the symbols which are used in the programming language like uh, single quote, double quote, slash, first bracket, curly braces, uh, square brackets, add the rate, dot, uh, comma, all these things. Okay, all these are the basic ones. So I hope uh, things are clear. Okay, uh, next we come with something called as keyword. Uh, so okay keyword is over comment is there right so what are comments something which is used to describe the code right what, what we used to write the code so when we talk about the keywords guys when we talk about the keywords how many keywords we have in python 36 36 no closer but wrong very close. One less, 35. Okay. What exactly? Can you give me any examples of the keywords? Auto. Hint void. Hint void. Okay. So, uh, let's see. We just write help of the keywords. All these are the keywords in the file. How many of you know this shortcut? Very easy one. Right? You can see nine rows here, four columns there, nine, four, thirty-six, minus one, thirty-five. Because here is eight. All right. Otherwise, you can import the keyword and you can print all the keywords list. Uh, where it is? Keyword dot kw list. And you can get it there, right? So, if you also want to print the length of this, you can directly like len to get the app to all this things, right? Okay. So, thus the comments are of two size, uh, the two types, sorry. Uh, one is a kind of single and then we have multi-line comments and I think uh, that is not to be described right because that, those are easy things right okay right 
when we talk about operators can you let me know how many operators are there the very basic and the first operator what we study in the python is arithmetic operators arithmetic yeah arithmetic is the very first and the very basic one there we used to do just the basic mathematical calculations like addition subtraction multiplication addition, divisions and division division exponentiations modulus and all those things right there we do to the, uh, do all these things so uh, let's say like if i'm having x and y as my 5 and 10 uh, i'm just going to let's say uh, doing some arithmetic calculations so ar ops and i'll say it to be x plus y x minus y x divided by y the division will be taking as letter on this x divided by y so does the rules are there 15 minus 5 15 and 0.5 that's easy right next operators about x divided divided by y x modulus of y And x to the power of y. So one five. Uh, okay, nine seven six five six two five and zero. Basically, the floor division. What you are getting from zero point five. And x modulus five is your five. So what is this first operator? Double double division. What it does this? Integer division. Result into. Integer division. It is. Like see, okay. integer division means like if I am saying hundred divided by three, your result is something thirty three point three 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 and all right. Uh, let's say if we round off how we can round off this value okay 33 okay. okay. all right now if i say that i want results something like 33.3 uh 33.33 how i'm going to write it if i only want 33.33 then by using floor hmm. function what function floor What is it? What function? That's basically what we say. Round off, rounding off to the numbers to the decimal places, two decimal places, three decimal places. How we can do that? Round off, sir. Yeah, but how? What should be the code? Okay, there is a function called as round. So round the values of hundred divided by thirty-three. Right. So now you will get only three. Oh, sorry, third only three. That's thirty-three basically. What you for, uh, first said that if we round off, we say it as thirty-three. But now if I, if I say that I want thirty-three point three three, then what I have to do is I will have to round it as hundred by three to two decimal places. Got it? Thirty-three point three three. Got it? Having doubts? So in this hundred divided by three. One second. One one second. Hold on. Hello. Yes, who's this? Yeah. So yeah, what what you were saying? Someone someone was saying something. Is it clear how we round off? Like, if you want to five decimal places, you can make it there one one decimal place. Easy round function. If you want more help, I think uh, it's there in the help module. Round is given. Yeah. So round a number to a given precision in decimal digits. The return uh, values an integer if n digits is being given, and so does the things with are done easily, right? So you can go with this. Now uh, I think someone asked, what is the value of this? What what exactly this does? 
So if you see 100 divided by 3 is giving you some yes. results. Now if I say that I want only the integer result that exactly is 33 only, right? So I can use 100 integer division of 3 or the floor division of 3, right? So it will convert this total thing in an integer format and you will only get this result that is 33 and that's the thing, see. So clear? So we can use it in place of round also. Yeah. If you like want to round okay. up something, you can use in that place. But see, okay. uh, if I if, but sir, uh, if it is like thirty five, if if it is something called as thirty five point eight, let's say, right? Now, mm -hmm. if you want to mm -hmm. round off it, round off thirty five point eight. How? What is the value then? Thirty five point eight. Thirty six. Thirty six. Right. So in some cases you you cannot write it like because if you are getting 35.8 35.8 in some division right if, if you get 35.8 in some of kind of a division then if you uh, give the integer division you will get 35 you will not get 36 got it my points see if I say 3 by 5 what is that 0 0.6 okay 0 0.6 so if I round off this I think this will give you the answer exactly like that. Round off is 3, three by 5 is after 0.5 giving is 1. But if I say 3 divide divide by 5, what is the result? 0. Because that 0 0.6, 0 0.6 will be detected and you will get only 0. And in 3 by 5, rounding off will give you like 0.5 we have covered, right? So 0.6 is there. So obviously it will get 1. Okay. It will be rounded off to one. Yes. Yes. So clear. So every time we cannot round off it, but uh, like in some times we can use it. All right. Okay. Moving next. So I think that is clear. Yes. Sir. Right. Next is the uh, where we was actually. Yeah, in the arithmetic operators. So these are the operators and these are the basic usage of what we can do. All right. Next, sometimes we use special operators. Special operators is uh, nothing but everything. Uh, what do you see just below? Sorry, just above your letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and all. You can use shift to get all the special operators and all. Okay, next. So, variable uh, is done. Now, there are data types in Python, right? So, the very first, first data type is numeric. One second. The very first one is numeric data type. So, how many uh, uh, kind of values come inside the numeric data type? Can you tell me? Hmm. Yeah. Integer. Yeah. Float. Hmm. And complex. 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 Good. Complex number. Right. So, uh, let's say numeric data type of where is it? P and small and okay so first one is integer okay so um just writing up the things integer how we define integer what are things integer quick quick anyone what what is an integer which are not which, which are, are not, not decimals <laughs> which are not decimals whole, number with negatives. whole numbers yeah Thanks. all right Correct. It can take only numeric values. Numeric values. So float also take numeric values. Complex also take numeric values. But uh, numeric can take only whole numbers. All right. So you you want to say that integer can take only whole numbers? Oh no, someone is waiting there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, whole numbers basically we say positive negative whole numbers. These are integers. So like 23, 46, uh, 56, 78, all these are integers. Where is that comma missing there? Negatives. Yeah, negatives too. These are the integers. When we talk about the uh, float, what is that float? Decimals, fractions, or otherwise you can just say real numbers basically. All that comes in the real numbers are basically all the floats. 
we can say that so like minus 2 minus point like 4 or 4 by 5 6.7 0 0.6 all these are fruit having points real numbers all right okay oh yeah next we come up with the complex now what what is a complex Imaginary number uh, A plus IB in the form of A plus IB. Yeah, combination of like an in, in programming we say no, A plus no, no, BJ. In programming we say it as A plus BJ. Right? In form of that. So 32J, 45 plus uh, 4J, 0 plus, uh, let's say 10 plus, 10 minus, 3J, kind of. Right? <coughs> But how to understand what is a real part and what is an imaginary part in here? How do we get it? Sir. Yeah. So this this notation J is fixed, or we can use yeah, any yeah. other this alphabet. Is fixed. In like in programming, we use J. Okay. So what is the real and what is an imaginary one? The number with first one J. is the real part, second one is the, okay, the one with J is imaginary. Yeah, so uh, uh, like this is understandable for us that this is a real part, this is an imaginary. But what if I want to print a complex, uh, I want to print the imaginary part of 45 plus 4J. What should I write? My question is? I am G, Shad, maybe. <laughs> I am G, you are uh, a bit closer, something is missing. Real or imaginary? Imaginary, not IMG, I am G for images, it's IMAG. Okay. Okay, so uh, you want like 45 plus uh, 4J dot IMAG, imaginary, that is 4.0, obviously, okay? She was a bit confused, all right. So like this, you can go. So this, this function returns floating value by default. Yeah, always you will get the values in float. Okay. Here, real part is nothing. So no real parts, only these things, right? Okay, so these are basically in the form of A plus BJ, where the B is complex, A is the real. And we will see this particularly in simply in a very a great uh, way so what basically i gives you iota is like under root of minus one so if you say under root of minus one. yeah so what are the things if i want to write a root of something let's say under root five what is the value of under root five uh, let's say under root 64 so how can i write under root of 64 here without using any functions Uh, I don't want to use that math function and all. 64 to the power star star 1 by 2, I guess. 64. Star star. I'll just write 64 to the power. Now, if you are saying to the power, then uh, there is no need for saying star star. That is That star is called as asterisk, okay? So, 64 yeah, yeah. to the power of something you are saying, that's it, okay. So, you don't have to define again the stars and all. So, 64 to the power of 0.5. One by two or point five, eight. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, we have several ways. Uh, SQRT of math. SQRT. Yes. Right. Then, and simply we have simply called as root and numpy. We have numpy dot SQRT and lot of things are there. Okay. Leaving it. Right. So I think the arithmetic operators are very easy and clear to you. Right. Okay. So numbers are clear, right? Next we have something called as random number, but uh, I'll go in it later onwards. Before going in random, I'll let you know something again, revise this one topic that is typecasting, you know, typecasting. Something <laughs> called as type like integer to float to uh, string to uh, complex kind of things. Okay, these uh, basically are being done here. So, uh, how many kind of typecasting are there? Two kinds. Yeah. Two types. So what are those two types? Implicit and explicit? Yes. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. So, what is an implicit one? An implicit one. Step floor. You step floor. <laughs> okay. See. So, from uh, lower precedence to higher precedence. Lower precedence to higher precedence. Okay. Sir, in explicit, I think we mentioned the data type to which we have to convert. Yeah. And so in, in see, implicit, I'm not sure. Yeah, see, see, see uh, the very basic, like uh, what I used to give, like when I take uh, these sessions, what I say to students is like, whenever you go for any topics, don't go for the bookish definitions and all. Like, uh, understand the concepts, it's, it's okay. You can make your own definitions. Like if I'm saying two kind of... Uh, uh, type casting are there then you you know that is an implicit and an explicit okay now always remember implicit is something where you don't do anything okay implicit is anything uh, which is automatic okay so the type there changes automatically you don't do anything in explicit you actually force the type to change in some other type that is being done so in explicit, what you do is you change the type and implicit, you do not change the type. That's it. Okay. Only this is the basic difference you have to remember. So you'll never need a bookish definition ever. Okay. Easy one. So let's say if I'm having two as an integer, I'm having 2.5 as a float. So I don't need to change any data type. Automatically, if I'm adding an integer with a float, I'll get something as float. So have I changed? No. But if I say this, an integer of 2 plus 2.5, here I'm changing the data. Type. Basically, here I'm changing the type from float to integer. I'm forcing this to come in the integer, not in the float. And there we get the results at 4. That's it. So these are the two types. Implicit, which uh, occurs automatically, and explicit you do. All right. All right. Okay, then comes as the input function. This is also a um, nice one. So, input function. Let's say if I have got 350 out of 360, I want to calculate a percentage, right? So, I have to write a program that the user is going to uh, write 350, okay? User is going to uh, write 350 so i am going to write an input statement where i am going to write uh, enter marks okay and i'll run this and i'll get 350 out there and i have taken oh, okay i haven't stored it let's say this is marks m a uh, let's say m and i'll take the inputs and so does i'll get the output accordingly let's say 350 now if i want to calculate the percentage what should i write Sir, first we have to uh, convert this uh, M because input is written in string type. In string type. Sure. See, by default, that was uh, sure. that exactly what, yeah. Sir, so can you please Sorry. once again repeat this command? Yeah, sure. See, uh, there was an internet issue. Okay, okay. no issues. See, uh, we have taken an input function where we are taking an input basically to take the input like we ran this one and we entered 350. Like if I'm saying that I have got 350 out of 360, I want to calculate my percentage. So I have entered 350. That's it. Now, if I want to calculate my percentage, what are the following steps? Um, anyone saying or I'm saying? No, so I'm first we have to change this m into int, then divided by three sixteen, and we got the answer. Okay, so I I'll have to write m is equals to integer of m, and then I have to write m <coughs> divided by three hundred and sixty, and that's being multiplied by yeah, and then we can print this uh, yeah hundred by hundred to get the results accordingly, right? So, uh, what is there any other step? Or is there any... Uh, so, we have to convert... Uh, hmm? Do typecasting. Typecasting. So, uh, exactly, Sorry. we are doing that from string to integer. We, we have, have to convert it to integer. Yeah, we are doing it here. So, we see can, guys. Yeah, we can gain over there. 
yeah you can also take float right you can also take float there is no such an issue that you only have to take 300 and uh, this like that uh, like uh, 350 only uh, like an uh, integer only you can take when the float 350.0 that can be done all right okay fine now uh, yes. see you can reduce this step how just by writing m equals <coughs> integer end of input end of input and say marks now the user will enter the marks and what you have to do is m divide by 360 multiplied by 100 and you will get the results so i say that i'm going to round off this results by one that's it and the results like 350 and percentage is 97.2 percent easy done you can take floats and all so this is one the input right now what you take when you take marks always try to take in float don't take in input like if the user has got 97.5 you'll be only taking 97 where is the 0.5 that is also users uh, you can say hard work right he'll gain marks by his hard work or might be he will be doing cheatings and all so but that is necessary right you, you take like if it is 97 if the user's marks is in point then you are decreasing its 0.5 that is not good right so you must take things in flow now when i have to take a complex input in that case what function should i use Complex means a complex float. Float? Number. Why? Well, see, if I say float, or uh, no, what is float? This is float, and I say input. One second. Uh, this is input, and I say, uh, let's say any number, and I run 32 plus 76j. Enter. Could not convert string to float. So, this is a problem. I need a complex i'll have to write the function eval and then i say a number it is used to input a string right what a is list it? sorry what what eval it is used to input a list i guess input a list yes i didn't get you what exactly okay let's run this first 32 plus 76j enter done okay easy now you can see the real part the imaginary part and all okay so what is this eval function basically called as this uh, is an evaluate function we can call us okay evaluate arbitrary uh, uh, expressions basically all right so you can take sir can you yeah sir hmm? uh, can you just show us the uh, yeah type of this uh, number this integer 32 plus 76j it's complex like okay one second y is equals to this and get the type of y now let's say anything i'm just writing 32j okay Okay, so it's just like when you take inputs accordingly to different different types, you can make it there. Okay, right. So I believe uh, inputs is over. Right, coming to the random types now. Now you might have focused sometimes that uh, you get something in your mobile phones as OTP called as OTPs. Right. What exactly yes, are those things? OTP. What are those things? One-time passwords. Right, full form. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Hmm, fine. So, how these are generated? OTP. Randomly. Randomly, correct. So, uh, can we generate these OTPs randomly? Yeah. Okay. For a time, how many we can generate? Uh, 
for a time means after we uh, uh, no like, if i'm one saying that at is. one time how many numbers we can generate we cannot say yeah correct how many correct entries. correct so okay now uh, you might have used random functions right so in case of random functions you might have seen something that uh, there can be repetition of the numbers numbers can be repeated yes, okay uh, let me yes. come to the random let yes. me write okay i'm just bringing the random range okay all right so from random just import the rand range and um, do i say that rand range oh what is that rand range one second all right now rand range i'm saying okay rand range of uh, 224 okay. i run this i get 3 i again run this i get 3 again i run this again i get 3 Again a three. Again, okay. Now it's two. Sorry. So you will only get the answer between two and three, right? Correct. You will only get only get the answer between two and three. Sir, why yes. is it giving only integer value? Sorry. Uh, and it and it's not the real numbers. Real numbers? No, I, I didn't. Get clear by you. What, two, what? two and four. Two and four, yeah. Why you are only getting between two and four? Can it? Yes, sir. Why is it only integer values? In why it is only integer value because it gives you only integer. Like if you if you see the help of the random, this will take you something here which gives that or there is something called as a definition. One second. Where it is? Where it is? Where it is? Uh, is. Okay, there is a link. Let me click on this. You will get straight away to this link here in the module. And like, see, if you want a float value, there are various things. See, rand range, rand uh, uh, integers, and all. Like, if you have a doubt of this one, uh, function of all this. Let me remove this. If you have a doubt of why we are not getting a float value. right uh, like that so we can use from random import random so like do we say random so we get a random float value random 5 uh, okay okay uh, we can give a range in the dumpy we'll see so in this rand range function these states we'll get only, only integer integers 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 If you want uh, float values, there are various parameters. Uh, let me take you to the directory oh. of this random. Is it there? No. One second. Why always the strings comes? Okay, one second. Oh, this could be random. One second. One second. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? See, we have choices. We have. We'll see all these random expo variant, gamma variant, something called as see rand range is there, which give you only an integer. Okay, rand is there, which yes. which will give you the integers. Okay, then you have samples two seeds two are there. Um, shuffle is not that much. Okay, okay, fine. Let's go with the topic. Uh, you will see when yes. you see the help of all. You see the. Uh, the Yes. the directory and all you will get your questions answered so i am getting always okay. the answer between 2 and 3 that's it we will not get 4 why because there is something called as range and range how it works minus 1 of the last always okay yes so now uh, if i say that rs if i'm having rs okay i say rs of 22 to 220 So now there is a very less chance of any number to get repeated. So how can we say that if we increase the distance between the starting and the stopping number, right? If we if we go on uh, increasing the distance between the starting and the stopping number, then we can say that there could be 
the less amount of repetitions in the numbers right it can be yes. like if i make a list for i in a range of 10 and print random uh, print rs of 2 to 10 so see 4 5 okay 2 times is 8 and 2 times is 4 and there it is like we are getting things over there. okay so all the things like if we copy count paste and run this oh, obviously last one will begin there so let's do one more thing let's say there is a list l and it's not printing now Pending the things okay so now going with l and getting two six nine six four two five nine four nine so how many are being sorted ls dot sort l so two two for two times four for two times five for one time six for two times and nine for three times okay with a small range let's make it larger sorting l you can see now 2 to 20 has got 2 for once okay this has got reduced 7 for 2 times 11 for 3 times and 12 for 2 making it more larger okay a bit larger but like 50 let's take it to there so see 10 numbers are only getting but the see now repetitions only 2 is for 3 times and none of them are being repeated like except of 24 right the same things okay now this is exactly i'm saying that now in case of random so the last number you will never get 50 are you getting 50 in any place no but if i say that from random if i import rand int and i say rand int as rt i say rt of 2 to 4 can you say me what are the numbers i'm going to get Three. What are those numbers? Two, three, and four. Yeah. Everyone is saying only three. Oh, I'll not get two, or I'll not. Only get... three. Oh, only no. three. No, that is wrong. See. Why, in, sir? <laughs> in rand range, what happens in the last word is range. Two. Two, yeah. <laughs> Someone is saying to me. <coughs> okay. Fine. No issue. Let's clear the doubts. So we have range and we have integer. Two words after the random. Okay. Now, what is the working of a range? If I say range of 2 to 20, what it means that the numbers are going to start from 2 and will continue till 19. Right? Okay. Like this. And if I say not a range, if I say an integer, an integer of 32. Uh, okay, first I have to remove this. Uh, let's move this quickly. Yeah. Integer of 32 is just right. Now if I say integer of 32, 34, there cannot be an, like a range of things within an integer function. Right? So for that we use range. Okay? So, in case of range, we say it as RT. Random int between two numbers. Starting number will be there. Stopping number will be there. Okay. So, you are going to get every numbers from the start to stop. So, basically, you are going to get a random integer number from 32 to 34. Any random integer number. You can get even 32. You can get even 33. You can get even 34. But in case of random range, as it is a working of a range, you will only get the numbers from 32 and 33. So if you run this, uh, this will see 33 is there, 32 is there, and maybe I think 34 should come. No. Okay, let's run this. 34, come quickly. 
okay i'll be keeping on running this until i get 34 random integer is this right okay 44 come 34 yeah see so here it is okay so random integer is something different and random range is something different. however the working are quite same okay but the outputs are different all right now if i say so how are the otp how are the otps you get there six digit something sometimes basically uh, four digit six digit based on the various uh, websites and all their functionalities most of the times you get six digit so how exactly you get the things so it starts from one two three four five six okay or uh, i think it's like in one 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 two three four one two three four five six you can take exactly like this one two three four five six and go till one two three four five six <laughs> like this so rt a number now is there any probability for any number uh, there are probabilities but there are very less probabilities right for any number to come uh, as uh, the double or triple between these because there are a lot of numbers between them right one one yes, one sir. lot of numbers yes. are there so very less probability yes. is there but there can be probabilities i'm not saying that the number cannot be repeated this cannot this can be done even right but when you make large things there is uh, such very small probability of any numbers so if i'm trying to make an otp like i if i want to send an otp to a user how exactly we are going to write up those things let's say uh, if i am taking that from the user that i am saying uh, mo that integer uh, enter your mobile number right asking the user enter your mobile number very easy one input sir oh, sorry 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 thank you so input enter your mobile number he will enter his mobile number or she will whatever uh, mobile number will be entered right the very next step is what you will see how basically a configuration of all these goes when you enter a mobile number is this is this so like you enter the mobile number and you get the otp no there are a lot of process goes what goes inside that first it will check whether like if you are giving an indian mobile number then it will check whether this is a 10 digit mobile number or not first of all so if it is a 10 digit then uh, if this is there in your customers list or not or if it is a new mobile number then it's okay right so uh, you first have to check whether this is a 10 digit mobile number or not okay so that's the problem so uh, if i write integer of this can i uh, go for checking that what is the length of the total mobile number no sir with the string we can do that yeah in integer we cannot do that right so i'm um, just removing this integer we'll do it further okay so for now we will take the mobile number okay and then the very first thing is if the mobile number is e uh, is greater sorry is uh, you can say on equals or is the length you can say on basically length yes equals equals to 10 if the length of the mobile number is equals to 10 what we can do next further step is we can change this in the wrong case. <laughs> we can generate a otp right for now we are not going with all those security issues right so i just making an otp so otp can be for now this can be so otp is something like uh, now we'll generate how rt okay yeah so uh, otp is something like what we'll take we'll take numbers from the users one like if if i uh, see if i'm saying you let me make it more clear yeah so if i have a number three four five six seven like this right so if I say uh, zero of this, I get three, right? Plus uh, same digit, three, four, five, six, seven of two, what I get? Thirty-five, right? So converting this an in integer, what I get? This thirty-five, right? Similarly, what I'll do 
from your mobile number i'll take some of the numbers take any maximum number and minimum number of your mobile number so if this is 1 to 3 till 0 and you say max possible no so you'll say integer of this this right copy so is it possible for this still no right so what could be the maximum number? How can you find the maximum of this all? Anyone? How can we find it? Yes? It's easy. Like, um, like if we run a for loop and collect these things mm -hmm. in the list, then we can get that maximum. Uh, okay. Hmm. Huh. You want to do when a for loop and then going accordingly. So, uh, if I say this is an integer basically, and I say do like after coming in an integer, if I make an, something like a list, uh, why it is of oh, sorry, object is not for loop. So, first of all, let's see if it is an integer. What we can do is we can take a list and for loop you as you said. Like uh, taking out the maximums and the minimums of there. If we, if we take it in the string format, right? So you can take the maximum and the minimum how using the chr function. Do you know chr? If I say chr, Character. what is that? Character. Character. So chr of Char. thirty-two. What is this? Uh, let's say one zero five. Okay. I'll give you something. Right? What is this cat? Yes, sir. ASC, IAC number. Oh, okay. Okay, value so. This gives the characters. Hmm. What For the gives, ASCII values. What it gives then? Uh, let's take the other numbers. Yes. I it is is it I right? So this gives the ASCII values. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. So uh, let's say here we were that is OTP. Okay. Now let's take. I have taken random. Okay, random integer I'm taking. So let's say that uh, just taking up something one five six seven. Any random numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. One two three four five and one six and. I think one two three four one two three four five six okay so got a random OTP here okay after this we will print that uh, the OTP has been sent to the mobile number ending with what Ending with what? MO of last three. Something like this, you get. And yeah. then you can print the OTP. And this is something like this. And uh, then you can. That's it, done. Okay. So just taking a pip. Let's run this. So enter a mobile number, let's say I'm writing my 626-323-2517 and I'm getting the OTP has been sent to the number ending with, oh no, half has been wrong, this could be minus. So it will be 6262 that. Or else what you can do <laughs> is, uh, no, not, not like this, you can take one more thing that is uh, starting from like MO and uh, yeah exactly what he is saying. Like uh, till three, yeah, go what till you got? Nine. Yeah, and then like uh, uh, something like this, this, this are all goes right, and then you have uh, the last one, right? The mo of the last things, right? You can say like minus three, minus. Uh, so we can use we can use also uh, like a, a nine uh, ratio, uh, like. M minus uh, uh, from this number till last one. Hmm. M minus three to everything you can say on. Like let's let's see how it works. 
so yeah it's working fine so like 6 to 6 and all going to there so this is the OTP you got 506047 easy right in case of Google codes it's nothing very much uh, uh, hard basically what what the exact thing you get there is you just take an OTP I think my OTP is there okay fine so there is something called as a line that's it the only difference is of the line so that gives that this is your one time Google verification code this is something like you get in the end of your code right what the starting is starting is G hyphen plus the str of the OTP you generated plus this and this is the result what you get in your mobile phones isn't it correct easy for Facebook is again easy for like if you are changing password in the Facebook what do you get OTP uh, not OTP yeah you can write OTP comma is your uh, I forgot the this one is your Facebook password reset code I think I have made a spelling error and A and is this something you get again easy one so random can be very useful uh, similarly in NumPy will read something called as choice okay they will read that so that is the basic fundamentals of one time passwords the bank uses this for your pin generations and lot so in a time you can generate a lot right like if I say L equals to this and if I copy this step copy so for I in um, just making uh, one basic thing okay I'm using some features right now one second data frame uh, okay fine just a moment you just see like how we use these things right so like if I'm saying for a day I'm generating a code right so I can say no uh, we are not starting up right now I'm just giving you a, just a glance like what exactly I'm talking about Is it any errors over there? No. So if we look on to the date, what are my dates? Date is starting set. Uh, for now, you just only focus at what I have written. I'm taking a range of a dates. Okay. I'm taking a range of a dates and how many dates? So from first, uh, what is that? Eight, then March, August. August. So uh, from first uh, August 2020. Okay. Is that? Yeah. September, October, yeah, correct. So August 1st, October 2020, I'm taking 10 dates, right? So you can see 1st October 2020, 2nd October, 3rd October, uh, 4th, oh, sorry, is, is, that is August, right? August and all till 10, right? From 1 to 10. Is that clear to anyone having doubts here? Don't go with like what I'm writing now for Pandas PD and all this thing. Okay, just only see this line, uh, just only these words, right? Taking a range of dates and 10 dates. Is it clear till here? Everyone, no doubt. right? Clear, clear. Yes, okay. Okay, so there is no such big thing, right? You have only written a date, and you want ten dates after that. So uh, ten periods is there, and one to ten. That's it. Very simple. I uh, will uh, will also explore what our pandas will have separate sessions for these all. Okay, I'm just telling you what we are doing. So we have date right for now, and uh, now I was writing something in the back. No, okay. Now let's say that we have a mm, okay I have to bring this to let's make a list okay 
and for i in a range of how many zeros are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's uh, take 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so you can see like I'm taking 1 lakh range. Okay, and uh, I don't see again NP range and all, right? Only focus on that. It's simple for I, you just think that it's it for I in the range of 1 lakh. Okay, uh, I'm doing that RT of of one 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 three i'm making small pins right four digit pins like this so rt of this okay so this will be my ot i'm making this as ot and then i'm saying l dot append so in a day how do we generate pins g plus str of ot that is being done and at last I'll say L equals to uh, let's just focus like one what, what is going till now np dot array of L dot reshape what is that reshape one two three four five zero so uh, one two three four five ten columns rows and columns okay so is it done correct done so now if I say df is equals to pd dot data frame mm. just wait 30 seconds more it is equals to 10 columns thousand columns are there like only we need the columns over there so 10 columns are there okay so we'll say this data is equals to l all right and the columns are going to be Let's execute this. Done. So let's say df to underscore of HTML as a date, or you can say a, a sample OTP, OTPs dot HTML. Oh, just wait 10 seconds. Done. Good. Now coming to this type. Okay. So now you can see something is there right there of 2.59 MB, which is called as sample otps.html. So I made a couple of program here, uh, some like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight lines program, right? Now, uh, including this all basically 10 lines program. So you see this HTML code and there are the Google codes. First August, second August, third August, fourth August. No time is mentioned here because I haven't mentioned time. I have only taken the dates. And five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and you can see how many codes are there for right now. Now you can see there are total one lakhs code, and if I go to the last at the bottom, you can see nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. Okay, so is it clear to everyone? Like how we can generate? We can generate even more. Sir, I can't see the screen right now. It is frozen. Okay, one second. Sir, we cannot see what you are. Uh, you uh, can see right now. Now it's yeah. Now it's yes. so this is for like for first August, second August, third, and all these till the tenth. What I have taken, like what why we have taken. So this is more or less similar to our programming. Ha uh, yeah, here you can say in the R exactly what you see. Data pins and all these things. Yeah, in R exactly you get the things immediately. Here also we create data frames and. Hmm. You get directly the things in the upper or the right side immediately there and here like so this is an html one right if we don't talk regarding the html this is something looks like uh, let me share it so there are total nine hundred nine thousand i think yeah nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine here over 10 columns and these are the things like you can even save this or you can do whatever all right so coming back here uh, so if you look on to the df I'm just making it like samples of first 20 or okay so here are the codes and all like for the first and so there can be uh, like if you think that there are no uh, duplicates number then there are duplicate numbers it can be there right so uh, we will look on how we are going through all those things for now we need to come back from that random 
and go in different place right so now uh, let's go with the operators let's understand what are the op so random is clear to everyone how random works yes right yes okay. sir you can do a lot of things with the use of random a lot of things are there like uh, i'm giving you one more example if i say using the choice function right okay random dot choice let's say you say that you want only 2 3 and 4 numbers your random numbers now in random you don't uh, know exactly what numbers you are going to get like if you write 2 to 4 you don't know you know that only 2 and 3 you are going to get but in what percent in what percent the probabilities i am talking about what probabilities you don't know right but choice is something where you can fix your probabilities like you said these are the numbers i want okay and the probabilities should be always equals to 1 okay like for the 2 i say it's 0.4 uh, greater 0.3 Uh, for, uh, for, uh, for three, say, uh, for or for for 3 let's say 0.5 so it's 9 0.8 now done so for 4 you have to take 0.2 okay that's been now one and you say the size how many numbers you want uh, let's say that um, i want 100 numbers okay 100 100 numbers so if i run this what i am going to get is a list of all the numbers you don't focus now all right so uh, remove this np the same you will get with the random dot choice also okay so the things what i am can see here is the 2 for 30% for 3 uh, for 50% and 2 for 20% or uh, 4.4 uh, point uh, what is that 20% yeah so i have the results right now you can will read everything in the numpy in very much detail right so choice can be very much better option when you want uh, here you define your own probabilities okay so these are the things right uh next coming up to the quick comparison operators and all let's discuss all those things so the first comes with the arithmetic operators a r o i think we discussed that arithmetic the next comes with the uh, assignment operators or comparison comparison let's discuss the comparison ones okay so coming to that comparison c o m okay and o p s All right. So, how comparison works? Let's say a and b equals ten and twenty. I'm not defining anything. So, if I say ten is greater than twenty, no. Ten is less than twenty. Yes. Right. And false true results. Okay. Or ten is equal equals to twenty. No. Or twenty is equal equals to twenty. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Right. True or false. Or ten is not equal to twenty will give just like in this, uh, just giving you a brush of all things. So ten is equals to greater than ten, or ten uh, is less than equals to twenty. All these are the six operators. All right. So less than or something. Right. So this can be done comparatively, comparing of the things. And then coming up to the assignment operators, these are also easy. some in some what we also say the first operator that is the plus one as like uh, concatenation kind of things all right like if we say x is 2 x equals 5 right so we can say x plus equals to 5 so if we run this x we get 5 pi basically call as string concatenation and also the assignment operators right So basically, what we have done here is, if we write x is equals to x plus something, right? Anything. So that is being done. So we are facing network problems here. Actually, your voice is getting break every time. From my side. I think so, sir. Because many of us facing the same. Oh yeah, I can see one, two, three. Let me check my Wi-Fi one second. Uh, just a moment. Is it okay now? Voice is okay, right for now. Or uh, having issues still? Let 
me mute again. Audible? Yes. Perfect. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, I hope things are clear. Might be a Wi Fi issue. I've settled down. Okay, so uh, like things can be taken as like x plus equals x minus equals x multiply equals x to the power equals and all right thing so that can be the things here in the assignment if, if i say x is equals to 15 so i do have to say like x plus equals to 15 more and then printing x will give you 30 x minus equals to will uh, like 10 and giving x will give you some results so i hope these operators are clear to you these are not the very good uh, important things to discuss then we have name conventions name conventions we say underscore words underscore like capital camel case camel cases upper camel cases and uh, yeah, these are basic things like if you say yeah, camel cases this is camel uh, this is like e l and case camel case sometimes you have upper camel case Instagram is based on this all. I think I have made a mistake. Yeah, this is capital camel cases. And this is upper camel cases. Okay, so there are ways of writing up the names and all. In the spring, so there are things. So I think capital camel case will be like the first letter will be capital and the remaining one will be smaller. Is this so? The capital camel case. Maybe one second, let me check. I might have written wrong. Right. Camel cases is giving there in the capitals uh, phrases in the user term. caps, middle caps, and no. Headless camel case, we can say on that. Upper camel case. Positive case or upper camel case. Where is the capital words? Yeah. That is why it's uh, different. Upper camel cases, I think. Okay, so caps and capitals and upper camel case are right now for the same. Okay, so you can take it like this. Uh, what I see on the internet is these have made as same. Capitalized words and cap words and upper camel case. These are made as same one. Okay. There are various names more, humpback, uh, that is also same one, and uh, headless camel case, headless means that first should be the uh, small, headless, and then the camel cases and all, what you say, like this, okay, first one would be the smaller one, and then you can go with all, that is also like camel case, so first one you can say, uh, like if it is capital C, and here capital C we can say that's also Pascal case wiki case is there and <laughs> lot okay so basically what we use is just camel cases are now in the Instagram part and all over things okay. so uh, do you understand the difference between the string replication and string concatenation okay. yes sir what is that replication and concatenation uh, like adding two strings adding two strings is called as concatenation yes sir and coming to the replication part what is that repetition repetition okay cool so 35 multiplied by 5 will give 5 times 35 and 35 plus equals uh, let's say if this is a concatenation I think I have done previously yeah, yeah. 
this concatenation. All right, so I hope uh, till here things are clear. Okay. So tomorrow we'll focus with the string methods, the less the dictionaries, the conditional things. We'll do some of the questions and the loops and all, focusing on that part and the, the indexing, slicing, couple sets, dictionaries, covering all. And then from day after tomorrow, we'll go on to simple, right? So any doubts on? Sir, can you please share the.